Hi everyone, I'm Allison. Thank you for joining me for where I'm from 153 with Colette. Um, I haven't started, but I'm going to read Come and Get It by Kylie Reed, which was loaned to me by Jen Prince, who is the friend um, that Colette and I have in common. That's how Colette and I know each other. So this seemed like a perfect book and I need to read it. And I loved such a fun age. And so um, I'm excited to read this book and Colette. Um, I hope you all had a good weekend. Um, I'm going to try again. Ella joined. Hi. Hello. Hi. We did it. I know. This is my first Instagram live. It feels so hip. Is it? All right. I like to be uh, people's yeah. first. There you go. <laughs> you have a nice background. Thank you. It's, uh, it's very crowded. The best part is my dog who doesn't have it. He's not asleep in the other room no. right now. But yeah. I'll be, they'll probably awaken and come. Bark they'll be something. fascinated by my poetry. <laughs> so they're just going to jump right up and wake up. Well, I'm very happy to have you join me, Colette, and um, I was just saying that I'm going to read, because I always say what I'm reading, and I, I'm going to read this, that Jen loaned me, and oh. it seemed apropos, because that's how I know you. Jen gives friend. me Jen Prince. so many of my best books. Jen Prince is my favorite reading buddy. Yes, she is a good reading buddy. She's a little busy. Just a, um, a wee bit. <laughs> we did watch her read magic last night with Jen Weber. We did. Yeah. We did actually see I, Colette and I saw each other in real life, which does not happen all the time last night uh -huh. uh, because Jen and Jennifer um, produced O oh, at Cosm, an immersive experience. Yes. It was, it was it, you have to see it for yourself because it's, um, you can't even describe no. it. It's so, as a writer, um, I mean, we both know you, you write something on a page and then it eventually makes it to the screen and you kind of have an idea of what it's going to look like, but mm -hmm. you can't even explain what we went through last mm -hmm. night. It was so overwhelmingly wonderful. Yes. And a very cool venue yeah. as an added bonus, which I may not have made it to in a timely fashion if I had not been invited. So it was nice. It's nice to have friends who do amazing things who include you. In Wait, so am I saying what I'm reading now too? Does sure, that... go for it. You don't okay. have to, but if you want to, please do. I, well, I, I always read three books at a time because... Okay. A lot of know, people do that. Okay. And um, and I work at Antioch. Yes. And um, three of my colleagues all wrote books, Aww. so I'm supporting them. So. Your best friend is watching and your biggest fan is watching, just so oh. you know, because they're there you putting I it in the chat. <laughs> um, so... Under the Mesquite by Guadalupe Garcia McCall. Beautiful. Okay. And it has a big, big award looking sticker on it. She wins lots of awards. Yeah, looks like an award. Mm -hmm. We're all holding Guadalupe's present and presents. And then I went to um I went to a book signing at my favorite new indie bookstore that's um called Sunny's Bookshop in Tarzana. Okay. Go see it. And um Genevieve Hudson and Tomas Moniz both read excerpts from their book. Oh, and lovely. Um, I'm a sucker when I go to a book signing, yeah. especially if it's books and I, I can't not buy a book. So yeah. You're the perfect person to have go to a book signing. Then, I really because that's yeah. you're you're doing exactly what they're hoping for you. And Hannah Sword, who's done a poem yeah, here and whose book you bought at AWP, I, I think, for Jen. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Great book. I said I said to Hannah, Hi, I'm buying your book, but it's not for me. Is that weird? <laughs> She's just happy you're buying her book. Yeah. It was a great book. Strip. Yeah. A memoir. And I actually quickly read it before I gave it to Jen. So technically used by the time I gave it to Jen, but it was inscribed to her. So it's fine. I was just saying that I think giving someone a gently used book is like the best gift because it's fun to share what you love with people. I love books. I don't really need them to amass dust on my bookshelf. Yeah. You know, I want them to continue to be read. So um, I think that's a lovely gift. So Colette, would you like to say anything else before you read your poem? Uh, yes. This, this is your time. I read, I watched many of your videos because I was like, what <laughs> is this about? And I realized about halfway through that I had to write a poem. And the funny thing about writing poems is I generally only write poems if I'm incredibly sad or incredibly mm -hmm. angry, mm -hmm. both of which are fairly rare for me. So, so to write a poem prompted by where I'm from and I'm I'm one of the rare people who actually had a really good childhood. It's I know it's good for you. My first 
my first acting class in uh oh see my dog did come <laughs> i mean the pets usually come in my experience um so i was in an acting class and uh yeah i was 22 and the teacher said who here's in therapy and of the 30 people 29 raised their hands and and i looked around i thought something's wrong with me because i i don't have trauma so um or i mean i do but but not childhood based and um, so it was really it was fun to write a poem which was just fun and joyful because mm -hmm. You know, we're living in a world where there's, it's sometimes hard to find joy. So thank you so much for, for giving me this opportunity to write it and then to share it with my mellifluous voice. <laughs> You're so welcome. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. And I have sat down, because I, I write one once a year, sort of an exercise around my birthday. And every year I'm like, I'm going to write a happy one. Because there's lots of happy, beautiful memories, mm -hmm. you know. Um, haven't gotten there yet, but one of these times, so you're inspiring me. Like you can, Great. um, I can do it. Yes. This year's going to be the year. Well, it's next year, but you know, and I hope we upcoming. you'll share it with me. Cause I would love to read it. Yes. Yes. No, I do share it as part of okay. my, like, I think also it just, I don't know. I'm asking people to be vulnerable. So every year I, it's, it's good for me to remember what it feels like to write a poem and read it. You know, it's a little vulnerable. I, I, love that i when i teach i always have my students mm -hmm. watch this thing i do about grief because mm -hmm. i always say i can't ask you to to open a vein and mm -hmm. and share vulnerable moments if i'm not doing the same so yeah. i you do that that's that's beautiful yeah that's well i like that you do that and I, I grief is something we haven't i mean grief is something we all i think have in common whether we know it or not but it's i'm not personal <laughs> on grief but yeah it's uh it's a topic that i i'm not afraid to talk about at all because i've i've been enmeshed in it yeah. so deeply and um and i wish the world would talk about it more because it's it, it, so private grief is so private and and everyone handles it very differently yes. and and you have to give them the grace to do so because it's their journey yes. but it's nice to feel supported as well yes and i saw you you sent a picture when your childhood photo, it's you and your brother. Yeah. And so um, I write and talk a lot about sibling loss because my brother died when I was younger. And so now when people send me pictures with their siblings, at first I would just try to make it like the person, you know, mm. but now I feel like unless they say, oh, this is one with my siblings, like I feel like, well, if they sent one with their sibling, their sibling is important to them. And so I want to try to include them because siblings are such an Important part, no matter what I think our relationship is like with them, uh, where we're from. Oh, I you know, love that. It's funny because my my brother, who I love so much. Hi, Dave. <laughs> um, he's in Boston, and he hates when I put pictures of him on social media. And I'm someone who's always posting on social yes, media. Yes, you do. You are a very good poster. I do. So, but I figured it would be okay to you know send a picture mm -hmm. of him when he's four or five. Like that's probably okay. I Hopefully it's okay. I think they're so cute yeah. and they, it shows the, lots of times shows the dynamic just even in the picture. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so, so here we go. Yes. Where I'm from. Where I'm from. Cheese, chocolate, Cabernet. All foods that begin with C's. Community, compassionate, confident, competitive. So competitive. I'm from lacrosse and field hockey, honoring the Baltimore Orioles' Eddie Murray with my own spin on number 33. I like to win, but more importantly, I like to play. Where I'm from is a playground, a playground of joy, love, support, Jewish folk music, Broadway show tunes, books, and words. So many words of affirmation. I'm from hugs and kisses and too many I love used to count. I'm from parents who loved me and whom I loved back. Every morning when I woke up, my father would say, you look beautiful in green, or you look beautiful in beige, or you look beautiful in puke mustard yellow. How could I not embrace a life with that gift of confidence? When I push 200 pounds, I still smile because I'm that same little girl who is beautiful in beige. I'm from a world that rarely exists, a world of hope and love and confidence and food and books and family. And cheese. I really do love cheese. Brie, burrata, mozzarella, sharp cheddar, smoked gouda, pepper jack, bagels with lots of cream cheese, anchovy cheese pizza, and Greek salads with extra feta cheese. I'm from a world which has evolved in unexpected ways. 
from watching Broadway shows to making Broadway shows, from playing sports to coaching sports, from being a student to being a professor, from Baltimore to Rome, from wearing roller skates my entire year in sixth grade to several hundred, 600 mile journeys down the California coast on my bike, from collecting stuffed animals to mother and greyhounds, from Shel Silverstein to Maya Angelou, from Judy Bloom to Ann Patchett, from the Brady Bunch to Fleabag, Annie to Rent, Punky Brewster to Judy Dench. Where I'm from is a world which enabled me to run when everyone else was walking. Where I'm from is love, hope, confidence, and community, and a lot of cheese. Well, it made me cry, which I, I try not to, but, um, hey. oh, your dad. Oh, that was oh, just so my dad sweet. So, my, dad, my dad is everyone's dad. My dad is just joy. We always, um, it's always the glass is half full in our houses because mm -hmm. my dad, who is an expert on the Middle East and is literally the most right. popular person in the world. So yeah, he's joyous. And it's, and it's funny because I used to be so intimidated by poetry and like in Antioch, there's so many good poets. Uh, we just hired a new core uh, poetry faculty, uh, Kathy Lynn Che. And so I read a bunch of her poems to prepare to write mine. I was, it's like Ann Patchett. You, you can't even come close. Like I will no. never be a Kathy Lynn Che, but I'm a Colette Friedman. So you just That's kind right. of who you are. Yes. And I made you cry. So. You did because what a sweet um just so sweet you do look beautiful like and that's and that's what we need to hear and what we need to say to people you know and um i could have used a little more of that oh. from my dad so that's why it made me cry um <laughs> because yeah i didn't get a lot of that so um i'm happy what a wonderful father now in your life i I have no problem. I, you know, I, that's my responsibility is to help the next generation and, and infuse love and hope and confidence. And all. So I, I it, feel the same way. You're, you know, you're just still a young, a young lass in your thirties, forties. <laughs> um, I'm 50, but so thank you. Life is true. Yeah. Um, yeah. So happy to push that confidence along in you. Yeah. Cause look at you. You're so like, you have a film coming out. I it's do. So it's exciting. amazing. I know. It's kind of surreal. As you know, you have yeah. it in your head and then so many times you have things in your head and you write it and then that's it. And did you, you know? You get into Toronto? Did I see that? Correctly? Shorts. Toronto shorts. Okay. To, I mean, oh, you know, oh, which is yeah. wonderful, but I just want to clarify, you know, I don't want. Yeah. I've made me. many films. I've never gone into Toronto. That is huge. You should, you know, buy yourself a plant. I always say when something really good happens. <laughs> Buy yourself a plant, and every time you look at that plant, you'll think, "I got into Toronto." I I do love plants. Um, I'm not very good at buying myself things, as one of my friends often reminds me. Um, she's like, "You're frugal. I get it, but right. you know, treat yourself." Um, this IG now or when it's posted later, please buy Allison a plant and bring it to her house. Right? Congrats. <laughs> I know Jim Prince is going to do it when she sees yeah, well, it. So. Perhaps. Um, so, um, what was the process like for you, Colette? So you really didn't know you had to write a poem. You just agreed to join me, knowing, no, having no idea of what it was, what it entailed. Yeah, I just like to talk in front of people. So, but <laughs> writing a poem, I'm telling you, I only write either angry or um, sad poems. So it was nice to just write a poem to write a poem. I guess a lot of people write sad poems. It's I mean, I think a lot of us started when we were teens, when we were feeling, you know, angsty. Yeah. Um, I wrote a lot of really bad breakup poetry. I'm, I'm a poor man you know, who doesn't make the money or have the, the fuck. But, you know, you, it's, it's great. Rather than being incredibly depressed or incredibly angry, you just, I do that with my writing, too. You just, you put your emotions into the computer. It's true. You do, for sure. I mean, it's writing has helped me process a lot of things in my life. Um, yeah. So, yeah, do, do you have anything else to say about it? Because usually I'm like, how was it for you? Oh, you know, yeah. Did you have to feel like, did you have to choose what you're going to write about? Or did you just no. know you're going to write about yeah. cheese? No, it just, I, I, look, I wrote the poem the way I write a lot of screenplays and plays is I just kind of talk through my fingers mm -hmm. and allow what's supposed to come out to come out and yeah apparently i wanted to talk about the the minutiae 
product of my upbringing and and the little things here and there and yeah i'm always i'm a sucker for uh Jeez. whenever i meet a whenever i meet a famous person i'm like this person wrote tootsie and i like cheese this person <laughs> created frozen i like cheese this person you know is an olympic athlete and i like cheese so it's yeah there's a it's, there's a commonality to my and can you still eat cheese because I know that's something that, that a lot of people's age, they can't do it anymore. I certainly can't eat a lot of it. Yeah, I can't have vinegar. Like, that, that's sure. gone by the wayside. And uh, and tomatoes are starting to lose it, mm. which is a problem. I like pizza. Yeah. Um, cheese on it. But, yeah, cheese is... I'm, I'm, oh, you're lucky. I mean, that's very fortunate. Because if you love it this much, I hope that you can eat it for your whole life. Thank you. you know? Yeah. Some it's heartbreaking for people when they have something to love and then their body's like, no, I, it doesn't, I don't love it. <laughs> I know. So, I know. So, um, okay. Well, anything else? <laughs> um, no, just, I just want to tell you, you're beautiful and smart and so are you. And I want to give you all the confidence your dad didn't. So, um, so yeah, so thanks for having me. And, um, now that I know what this is all about, I'm going to, uh, continue to watch the future 154, 155. Yeah. 155. Yeah, I'm scheduled for a while. It's been a real, it's a real joy for me because I love hearing about people's childhoods and um, talking with writers, but also just people who want to join me. Yeah. You know, I love that too. It's a, it's become a way to meet people and to connect with people who's oftentimes work I admire. Like I'll reach out to people I admire and say, Hey, do you want to join me? And a surprising amount of them say yes, which is very, um, well, that's a test. Yeah. Well, thank you. I think, I think it's just, um, I just feel so lucky. So, um, so if you have any friends, like your best friends here and your biggest fans, and I hope you saw that you got a beautiful and a fantastic and hearts and clapping hands and all kinds of lovely things in the comments. Um, sometimes when it's your first Instagram live, you just ignore the comments, which is yeah. fine because there will every once in a while be just some random person spamming yeah. it, which is not my favorite. Mm -hmm. Um, but these are all real people who love you and are giving you positive feedback on your work. Um, so I feel very fortunate to have seen you twice in 24 hours because you are such a ray of sunshine. And um, I think it's wonderful that you, you take all this energy into your teaching. And because I think teaching creative disciplines um, can be a real challenge because you want to encourage people to have dreams and to create, you know, and, but you also, you know, it's a, yeah. It's not the easiest life in the world. Uh, uh, I just picked up face. No, uh, <laughs> I, just got back. I know. I was like, I saw your face. Like, I was like, like something's happening. Something's happening over there. Yeah. Um, so I just taught in Italy and it's funny because I, I was that. talking to my students and they're like, we love this class so much. Thank you so much. And I said, why? Like, uh, I know I'm a good right. teacher, but I wanted right. to know. Right. And they, said because the teachers in Italy and I apologize to any Italians watching this they said they don't care they don't and my first day of teaching look I think teaching is my superpower I absolutely love teaching and I love I love helping people become better yeah. screenwriters or better playwrights or better novelists yeah. whatever they want you know everyone has a story and sometimes you just it becomes a little scary how to get that story out but okay. i genuinely love it like it 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 brings me joy mm -hmm. and apparently in italy the teachers do not have joy mm -hmm. so um i i think that's kind of now my advice to all teachers is have fun like love what you do otherwise get out and do something else i guess mm -hmm. that's true with all disciplines though like i i feel bad for people who don't love their jobs like i genuinely love my job yeah do you think that you love life and therefore love your job partially? Do you think there's a, I mean, are there other jobs you think you'd also, because some of it, I wonder if it's temperament and finding no, a good I, match or if it's, if it's I, just, I, you think you found the perfect job for you? I think I found the perfect job for me. Um, I mean, I love being a writer because I love being home in my pajamas all day with my dog and, you know, <laughs> have a glass of wine and keep, keep zip medicine on and not talk to people. But then I actually love teaching because I love, giving back i love i'm a connector so mm -hmm. i feel mm -hmm. like i can help the next generation tell their stories but no i don't think i'd be a very good toll booth operator no you wouldn't have a chance to really talk yeah you'd be like hey wait take longer with the toll yeah. um yeah. which is it's antithetical to being a toll operator you wouldn't want to do that um 
I want to say I'm grateful you're a teacher because I think we all have had teachers who did not care for our stories and our experiences. And it was, I'll speak for myself. It was very difficult uh-huh. to take it back from the people. Like, um, I went to USC and I've talked about it here and other places. Like it was a, not a good environment for me. And it took mm-hmm. me years to reclaim what I'd lost there. Um, because I, you know, I was paying a bunch of money. It's like one of the best film schools, whatever. And so you give these, I gave these people power, um, about whether what I was doing was worthwhile or not. And, you know, that's on me. I shouldn't have done that, but I was young and there was a power differential and, I wish that my professors had, um, and some of them did, you know, and to them, I'm very very grateful, but many of them, it was just like, well, this isn't working, change it to this, do it my way, you know? And it's like, that's not teaching anybody anything worthwhile. Um, so I'm just always happy when I meet teachers who are not doing that because people need to learn to find their own voice and we can't do it for them. Yeah. And that's even true with workshopping. Like don't, yes. Absolutely. So many, so many times in workshops, yeah. people are so yes. say what they would do. Mm-mm. I hate that. Sorry. And, you know, <laughs> figure out what they're going to yes. do. Yes. Yes. You know, tell me what's not working, but don't tell me how to fix it. And that's, you know, it's so interesting. This is what did come up writing the poem is that I realized, you know, I joke about cheese, but what, but the real thing I found in that poem was my love for community. And, mm-hmm. yeah. um, for me, it's always been about my friends, my family, my support system. And, and you look at people as they get older and the people who are isolated and by themselves wither so much faster. And I'm, yeah. I'm really, I love having my group of friends and my extended friends and my, um, uh, my students. And I'm an introvert, I don't even like people, but my, my collective means so much mm-hmm. and I feel like as writers, we're so isolated. Yeah. So having creating your own community, mm-hmm. whether professional or personal, is is so imperative. And I say that to my students too. Like it's hard to get people to read your stuff. Mm-hmm. So ask fellow students and do quid pro, pro quo. Yes. You read mine, I'll read yes. yours, and then it becomes a mistake. Yeah. I that's. I mean, I think that's such important advice, and I don't think I realized that till I just had somebody like Jen who was so priceless to me because her opinion meant so much. And she is a very talented reader in general. Like she she can see what you're trying. She was, I think the first person that I had in my life who really could always see what I was trying to do and and can help me get there. Of looking outside and kind of knowing where the holes are, Yeah, which is, um, look, that's why I love collaborating. Like I write a lot. Yeah. because one Brooke's so much funnier than I am. Um, so she makes me funnier. Mm-hmm. It seems less lonely because you're, you're mm-hmm. bouncing ideas off of other people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, community is so important and I'm grateful to have a, a handful of people who I trust, who trust me, who I can share my writing with. Like it's, it's everything really. Yeah. It, it's, it changes the writing when you find the right readers. 100%. Um, well, find the right readers forever from now on. Yeah, it's like, it's a good, put that on a fortune cookie. I, there's a lot of complaints in my house about the quality of the fortunes in the Panda Express fortune cookies because they're not fortunes, they're just good advice. And so we are missing fortunes. So I'm just putting that out to everyone who's listening. Um, <laughs> on it, start right. We want it, we want to hear, it's going to be a great day, you're going to do something, not be kind, it's worth it or whatever, right. like you want fortunes. Um, so anyway, Colette, anything else before we wrap up? Thank you for joining me. Thank you for uh, sharing your poem. Thank you for the listeners who are yeah. here. Yeah, such supportive friends. Yay, yeah. you, you so deserve that. I was gonna say actually, when you were talking about community, you're such a good community member. Like you're such a supportive, um, I, I witness you a lot and you're such a supportive caring friend so i'm not surprised that you have friends here supporting you that means a lot thank you and um yeah everyone go out write write a poem Let me know. i hope to inspired you to write a poem about where you're from and then you can contact allison yes and if you want the prompts yeah. 
just DM me and I will send them to you. Um, or you can just write whatever poem you want to write. That's also completely fine. But if you want the prompts, message me and I'll send them to you. So thank you, Colette. Enjoy more traveling, I believe. Yeah, I'm off to Iceland in two days. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Thank Lovely you. to see you. <laughs>